Today on Trucks, Project Big Blaze draws closer to completion when the guys install a bulletproof drivetrain as well as drive shafts on their K5 Blazer. After that, they've got a 94 S10 that's not afraid to drop the hammer on the sound barrier. They'll follow that up with all the tools you need to lay down a signature paint job. That's all today on Trucks. Welcome to this week's show, everybody. We're glad you're with us. Now, if you've been paying attention to trucks the past few weeks, then you're pretty familiar with Project Big Blaze that rolled into our shop a well-worn 88 Blazer. But for the sake of you folks who may have missed it, we already put on a lift kit, axles front and rear, as well as an aggressive wheel and tire combination. Of course, we followed all that up with a 350 crate motor, and that leads us right into this week's show, where we're going to go to work on the drivetrain. That's right. Now our Blazer came stock with a 700R4 transmission and an NP208 transfer case. Now these are adequate for a stock vehicle, but for something that modified, these will never get it. Now the 700R4 is a little bit controversial because everybody wants them for the fourth gear, but they got a reputation of being a little weak right off the bat, and that's not necessarily the case. Matter of fact, you can really make those things stout with a few modifications. So we went to B&M Racing got one of their modified 700R4s that'll handle up to 450 foot-pounds of torque and also give us the benefits of an overdrive transmission. Now, for the transfer case, we knew we needed something really strong to round out a bulletproof drivetrain, so we gave Advanced Adapters a call and ordered up one of their Atlas II transfer cases. Now, this thing features a solid one-piece aluminum case as well as all-gear drive for the ultimate in strength. Now, the Atlas II is available in different gear ratios depending on your needs and also comes with all the shifters, linkage, as well as adapters you'll need to be able to bolt it in and go. First thing we need to do is install the torque converter onto the transmission. Now for this, we're using a B&M lockup style converter for this application. Now here's a few tips when you go to install the torque converter. Make sure that you've got at least a quart of fluid down inside so you get some lubrication on initial startup. And also put a little bit around the seal and on the shaft and then install the converter. Now here's where a lot of people make some big mistakes. Now you saw me push on this. It's not going in any further, so it should be seated, right? Wrong. Notice these holes are almost flush with each other. The converter needs to sit at least an inch down inside. So you need to just keep turning on it until it seats in like that. Now remember, if you try to install a transmission without the torque converter fully engaged, you'll mess up the transmission. You know, one of the biggest reasons for having the drivetrain out of the vehicle is that it makes it a whole lot easier to assemble. Now, this aluminum adapter is not only what connects the transmission to the transfer case, but it's also what mounts everything to the cross member, so we'll go ahead and get that on right now. Now, we're also going to go with this brand new tranny mount we got from Energy Suspension, and that bolts right up to the bottom of our adapter. Finally, we're ready for the transfer case. Now, one of the neat things about the Atlas II is that you can tilt it to get the right angle to clear your drive shafts and your shifters. Now, once you get your angle decided, ours is going to sit at about 45 degrees, put your studs in, run a bead of silicone around the flange, and you're ready to slide this thing in place. But you will need an extra set of hands. Hey, Mel, you want to give me a hand Let's here? Let's do it. All right. <laughs> it's not light, is it? No, it's not. Then, just bolt it on. Of course, it would be silly to invest all your time and money in all these new parts and then try to reuse the old cables and dipstick tube for the transmission. So we went to Locar and got this really trick braided steel cable and dipstick tube to not only dress things up, but to perform better as well. Finally, we're ready to bolt the transfer case and the transmission into the truck. Now, we'll just jack it up and slide the bell housing up against the engine and engage these dowel pins. Now, the transmission should slide up flush to the engine very easily. If it doesn't, that means your torque converter is not engaged all the way or you've got some sort of obstruction up here. Now, whatever you do, don't just stick a bolt in here and try to tighten it down and pull the two pieces together. You'll definitely mess up something in the transmission. You need to fix the obstruction first. Then you can bolt it on. Follow that by bolting the torque converter to the flex plate. 
Now we're ready to get the inspection plate and the cross member into place. Now do yourself a huge favor here and take a little time to clean and paint these parts because it makes completing the project a lot less messy. Now at this point, all you're going to do is loosely bolt the cross member into place because you may need to move things around a bit when you do your final hookups. Next up are the shifters for the transfer case. Now ideally you want them to come up through the stock hole in the floor. So I've already cut the threaded rod and the support tube for the shifters. Now all you got to do is slide them in place. Now once you have it all together, all you have left to do is hook up your linkage. Now keep in mind you might have to come in here and trim this floor a little bit to make room for these shifters. While we're on the subject of linkage, now's the time to hook your tranny linkage back up as well. Now make sure you check all the original parts and if they're bad, go ahead and replace them. This is also a good time to reconnect your transmission lines to the radiator and take care of all the small stuff like the speedometer cable as well as all your electrical connection. Well, all the parts on Big Blaze are really starting to come together. We still have some hookups to make. We'll take care of those after the break. We'll be right back. Later in the show, we've got the tools you need to lay it down. But up first, we've got some finishing touches for Big Blaze to show you. Welcome back to Trucks. Now that we have a bulletproof drivetrain in our blazer, it's time to connect that to the axles, and that means drive shafts. Now for those, we went to Denny's Drive Shaft Service and got us a couple of monsters that are guaranteed not to break. <laughs> That's right. You break one of the welds or twist the tubes on one of these guys, and they'll replace it free. Can't beat that. Now for the front shaft, we've got a thick two-inch tubing with a CV joint at one end and a standard U joint at the other. Now for the rear shaft, we've got a massive three-inch tube with once again a CV joint for the transfer case end, a standard U joint for the pinion end. Now also these shafts are balanced and tested before they leave the shop, so they're also guaranteed not to vibrate. Now on a project like this, you can just go ahead and plan on having to have your exhaust pipes custom bent to clear the drive shafts or anything else that might get in the way. But we are going to show you some of the components we're going to run on our system. Now up first, we're going to change out the stock catalytic converter with this high flow cat we got from Random Technologies. And from that, we're going to run through this Edelbrock RPM muffler for great sound and flow. And finally, everything's going to exit through these stainless steel tips we also got from Edelbrock. Now that we have all the major stuff done underneath, we can lower the truck down and then show you the kind of headers we're going to use. Now for those, we went to JBA and got a set of these ceramic coated shorties that'll look great for a long time, but they also flow like crazy too. Now anytime you put headers on a later model Chevy, it can be kind of a pain because you've got to modify the power steering bracket. There was a whole arm here that needed to be cut off. Now, JBA knows this, so they include all the hardware and some really detailed instructions to make this as easy on you as possible. While we're up here in the engine compartment, there's still a few minor details to finish up, like the air filter. And for that, we went to K&N and picked up one of their filter elements for our crate motor. Now, we also needed a dipstick, so on that trip to low car, we picked up this one made specifically for the Ramjet 350. Speaking of low car, now is a good time to hook up the cables and the dipstick for the transmission that we showed you earlier, as well as this really trick throttle cable. Now, the dipstick for the transmission will mount somewhere on the firewall for easy access. The TV cable from the transmission and the throttle cable from the gas pedal will both hook up to a stock location on the throttle body. Now that we have all our brand new upgrades stuffed into the engine compartment, there's no way we're going to hide all that stuff with a stock hood. So we went to Goodmark and got one of their cowl induction hoods. Now this thing is all steel top and bottom with a two inch scoop and you can mount it using all your factory hardware. And the fit? Well, that's as good if not better than your original hood. Now anytime you start swapping drivetrains around, you might as well figure you're going to have to do some fabrication. 
things just don't slide right in. <laughs> That'd be too easy. Take all the fun out of it. Now, you can see where we had to come in here and cut out to clear these shifters. Now, you're going to want to fill that hole in, so I went ahead and made this panel. It slides right into place, and you can either hold it in with sheet metal screws so you can remove it to get access to your shifters, or for a more permanent situation, just weld it in. Now, over here, I'm definitely welding a panel in to take up all this excess original hole. Then, of course, the boots will fill up all the rest. Now, anytime you're making panels like this, Try to make them as smooth and flat as you can so the carpet will lay right over the top of them and no one will even know they're there. Now you might be wondering with the awesome suspension and drivetrain we put on Big Blaze whether or not we're going to do anything with the exterior. Well, you can put your mind at ease because we got some big ideas to work with. But the first thing we're going to do is get rid of all the stock trim on our 88 Blazer. One last thing, anytime you put in new axles or transmission, they're always shipped dry, so make sure that you fill them with the proper lubricants. Also, double check your fuel lines and your electrical hookups or you could end up with a big blaze of your own, and I'm not talking about the truck. Also, double check all of your steering linkage, your shifter linkage, your cooling system, all that needs to be taken care of before you ever turn that key. But hey, whatever you do, don't turn the channel because we got more trucks for you right after this. Up next on Trucks, we've got an S10 that sounds like it's ready to get up and go. Just can't get enough of trucks? Check us out online at TrucksTV.com. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. Now, when it comes to building a street truck, most people zero in on one aspect of their vehicle they really want to stand out. And that can result in anything from a real showstopper to a hot rod or even a street cruiser. That's true. And very rarely does somebody build a vehicle that's really competitive in more than one area. That's exactly what Chet Simmons did with this 94 S10 he calls Megawatt. Now, as you probably guessed, this truck houses a pretty serious sound system under the fiberglass cap. Serious enough to consistently walk away with a top prize in sound quality and pressure. Of course, that's due in large part to the attention to detail, as well as the layout of the EQs and wiring in the back. Well, by now, you're probably wondering about that slick black paint, those NOS stickers, and of course, that massive hood scoop. Probably all just for show, right? Well, go ahead and pop that hood, and you'll see there really is something to pull this thing down the drag strip. And what you're seeing is a 4.3 V6 with numerous upgrades, including a nitrous system. Now, this adds up to 386 horsepower on the dyno with quarter mile times in the mid 12. Now, that is smoking. The high performance theme factors heavily into the interior layout with racing style pedals and bucket seats with five point harnesses that hold everything in place when the need for speed calls. And speaking of that need, check out the controls for the nitrous and auxiliary fans in the center console. Also up on the A pillar is a gauge pod to make sure everything's happy under the hood. James Bond style gadgetry continues behind the seats where two 15 inch subs rumble away. Of course, neon flashes in time to the music and that earns points in the sound quality competitions. Now for the sound pressure or overall volume competitions, just punch a button, that unleashes a wave of wattage and volts through 16 speakers that can rattle windows into the next county. The exterior received its share of attention as well with a three inch drop all the way around and big meaty tires in the back that do their best to get the power on the pavement. One of the most unique features on this truck is the exhaust. Now instead of running out the back like everybody else, one big huge tip exits right out the side of the bed and the sound that comes out of that is music to our ears.
Welcome back to Trucks, everybody. Now, if you've been to any truck shows lately, you've probably noticed custom paint jobs showing up on everything from radical off-road vehicles to lowered street cruisers. But with the cost of those custom paint jobs going through the roof, more and more people are deciding to do it themselves. Unfortunately, most people don't realize the type of tools and materials required to do this kind of work so they end up having a really bad experience. So today we're going to show you some state-of-the-art tools from SADA that will help you set your shop up right. Of course, the first thing that you need is a good gun. Now, you get what you pay for here, so now is not the time to get cheap. Now, we've got this SATA Jet 2000 HVLP gun that has all the controls and adjustments that you'd expect in a state-of-the-art gun, as well as the benefits of high volume, low pressure. But when you go to shoot one of these guns, it has the feel of a conventional high pressure gun, which is really nice for you guys that have never shot an HVLP system before because they do feel a little different. Now also, this is a very light, well-balanced gun. Now that may not seem really important right now, but you get about halfway through a paint job out over a hood and you will be kissing this thing. Also, if you're going to use a gravity feed gun, make sure that you invest in some sort of stand because you definitely don't want to lay it down and it definitely won't stand up by itself. Now, for door jams and smaller jobs, you have to have a detailed gun. Now, this setup allows you to get into tight areas you can't get into with a big gun. Also, if you're doing some small detail work like valve covers and only need an ounce or two of paint, this is the setup you want. All right, now we come to the really big issue, and that's safety. Now, everybody knows that painting can be a little hazardous to your health, so what do you need? Well, if you're not painting very often and you're not shooting anything with isocyanates in it, then a little half mask like this with the activated charcoal filters is plenty. Just make sure that when you have one of these on that you don't smell any paint or solvents because if you do, it means those filters are worn out and you need to replace them. Also, I know it's real tempting to go out and shoot in shorts and a t-shirt. Do yourself a favor. Invest in one of these little painting coveralls because they're cheap and they protect your skin. Now, if you do a lot of painting or you might be shooting something with isocyanates in it, then you need to look into a fresh air respirator and a full head mask. Now, the way these things work is they totally cover your head and they seal around your face to completely lock out the fumes. Now, the air runs from the compressor through this filter system, then another line runs to your belt through yet another filter and then up to the mask, giving you better air than you're actually breathing right now. Always remember, painting a vehicle should be a great experience, not a hassle. And there's nothing like seeing a paint job come to life using the right equipment. Also, staying alive to enjoy your work by using the proper safety equipment is a big bonus as well. So invest wisely, let your creative juices flow, and we'll see you at the shows. And now truck gear, parts, tools, and equipment for pickups and sport utilities. Now, if you drive a truck or SUV, you know there's about as many products out there to hold your cargo in place as there seem to be stars in the sky. But today, we want to introduce you to the 4-in-1 cargo pole that not only acts as a cargo stop in the back of your vehicle, but thanks to this hook on the end, can also help you retrieve cargo that's moved around on you in transit. You also have a flashlight to help you out in the dark. But if all you want to do is cart your clothes to the next destination, a pair of hooks on either end make that possible as well. Get four tools in one with the cargo pole for about 70 bucks. Now, for those of you that are welders and you're still using the old tip and flip style helmet, well, you're going to want to throw that thing in the trash when you see these new auto dimming helmets by Jackson Products. Now, these allow you to see what you're doing when you're not welding, but as soon as you strike an arc, the liquid crystal dims in 125 thousandths of a second to the proper shade to protect your eyes. Then, of course, when you're done, it lightens right back up. Now, this not only protects your eyes, but it allows you to concentrate on your work as opposed to goofing around with your helmet. Now, these lightweight, state-of-the-art helmets go for 280 bucks, and you can get them from the Eastwood Company. When it comes to detailing your motor, nothing quite sets it off like this cool flex hose from Total Performance. It's a flexible metal hose you can cut to any length and bend to whatever shape you want. But the really big news here is cool flex is now available in red, blue, and purple, as well as the standard chrome they're famous for. 
Cool Flex is also available in upper and lower radiator hoses as well as heater hoses and comes with all the hose ends and hardware you'll need to replace the stock rubber ones forever. That's going to do it for truck gear. Let's take a quick look at next week's show. The Harry Haulers back. Next week, the guys will show you how the detail work can be the difference between a hack job and a real showstopper. Then we've got a 56 F100 that's not like any blue oval we've ever seen. Finally, we'll take our cameras down south to Moroso Motorsports Park for the Jet and Truck Nationals. That's all next week on Trucks. Well, that's going to do it for this week's show. We appreciate you hanging out with us. Yeah, we expect to see you back here on Trucks next week. This is cool. Now, is that a cow induction hood or what? Perfect. And it works with the lines just right. is an RTM production.